بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد when somebody is very genuine and they owe you money and they show that they serious they try pain then sometimes you'll even write off the debt based on the situation. We need to be crying, we need to be trying so much in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write off our debt. لَن تَزَالَ الرَّحْمَ بِالنَّاسِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy will be displayed on the, on the day of Qiyamah. حَتَّى إِنَّ إِبْلِيسَ يَرْفَعُ رَأْسَهُ مِمَّا يَرَى مِنْ سَعَةِ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ that when Iblis sees the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa shafa'ati shafi'in and how many people through intercession will get forgiveness and entrance into Jannah he will lift his head up in hope that is there a possibility that I also will be forgiven so we should display and show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how genuine we are. If they believe in you, what was ahead in Akhirat and the punishments, he would have not expected to get Jannat ever. And if a Kafir knew what mercy Allah had, ما قنط من رحمتي أحد. No kafir would have lost hope of ever entering into Jannat. He would have hoped and been sure and believed that I'm going to go into Jannat one day. So al iman بين الرجاء والخوف. That we shouldn't be doing so much amal that we believe that we are Jannatis, but the more amal we do, we fear. And we shouldn't lose so much hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we think so it's the end of the road now. I'm so lost. I'm gone. I'm finished. There's nowhere I can go to. There is only one door we should be going to. And that is the door of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said that uh, Yahya bin Aktham rahmatullah alayhi uh, said Ahmed bin Sahal seen him in a dream. So after he passed away he said Ya Yahya Ma fa'ala bika rabbuka How has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treated you? So he said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had summoned me and said you did this and you did this guna and you were very sinful and now you are deserving of punishment. So I told Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya Rabbi, O oh my beloved Allah Ma bihada hudithu anka This is what I was told about you about your mercy, I've not been told about your adab and your punishment. I know that your mercy is greater than your punishment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him, Tell me exactly what you're talking about. He said, Haddathani Abdul Razak, An Ma'amar, An Zuhri, An Urwata, An Aisha, An Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, An Jibrail, An Naka Qulta. Abdul Razak has narrated that he heard it from Ma'amar, who heard it from Zuhri, who heard it from Urwa, who heard it from Aisha, who heard it from the Nabi of Allah, who heard it from Jibrail, that you have said, Ma min Muslimin yashibu fil Islam, no Muslim grows old in Islam, wa ana uridu an uidhibahu, and Allah intends to punish him because of the kunas that he had committed, illa wa ana astahi an uidhibahu. But I feel shy to punish him. Means now he's old, his hair is grey. He at least died on Iman. There was a sign, some sign of Islam. And he said, وَأَنَّ شَيْخٌ كَبِيرٌ Ya Allah, you can see, my hair had grown old in Islam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied that Sadaqa Abdul Razak, Sadaqa Ma'amar, Sadaqa Zuhri, Sadaqa Urwa, Sadaqa Aisha, Sadaqa Nabiyu, Sadaqa Jibrail, Wa Sadaqa Du. All those people you have said have said this hadith, they have spoken the truth. I have spoken the truth as well. Go, I have forgiven you. So we should always be hopeful of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> And while we have the opportunity, we should be making tawbah and istighfar. Halakal musawwifun. 
Those people who say so far one day, one day I will make Tawbah, so far a tube, so far a tube, one day I will make Tawbah, for them is destruction. Don't leave it for next week, tomorrow, now is the time, now is the opportunity. Some people came to us, Ali radiallahu anhu, inni asabtu dhamban. I've committed guna, what should I do? Tub ila Allah. So turn to Allah. So then, thumma ta'ud. What if I return to that sin? So he said uh, that tuba, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, fa'altu thumma utu. Then again, I slap up. I made sincere tuba. I wanted to change. I took the steps necessary to protect myself from that sin. I went to the pious. I took a to the mashayikh. I started sitting in the company of the ulama. And then one day I slept again. So he said, ila mata. He said, how long should I continue this? That if I slap, should I carry on making tawbah? Hazrat Ali radiallahu replied, Hatta yakuna shaytanul mahsur. You carry on until shaitan grieves. Shaitan goes into sorrow and distress. And he starts panicking. Because he's carrying his wrong. He's continuing his effort. So why you not continue your effort? Somebody came to Mona uh, Tanu Rahmatullah and said, this person got a habit of uh, smoking. So I've told him five times, ten times, fifteen times. Now I'm tired. I'm not going to tell him anymore. What's your mashura advice? So Mona Tanu Rahmatullah said, if you told him so many times, did he stop? He said, no, he didn't stop. So he said, him in his battle and in his wrong, in his false cause, he was wrong and he continued. You are in hell, and you giving up? What a shame. He mean he's wrong, he's not ready to give up. And you in your truth, you're ready to give up. So we need to be checking all the time. And it's not just about knowing, oh, I need to do this, I know. But, aka janna, aka manna, one is to know and one is to obey. One is ma'lumat, what we know, and one is ma'mulat, putting the knowledge into practice. In one area, there was a lot of discord, fights, arguments, and it used to go to the courts, and it was a long drawn story. So the town, the senior people, the elders got together and made Bashara, we need to resolve this issue, it's, distra it's dis disturbing and it's distracting, it's wiping out the entire society. We need to find a solution. So this is one big sheikh, Hazrat Tanwi, can we go to him and see a suggestion? So they came to Mala Tanwi and they said, this is the problem, can we probably bring all our cases to you? So he said on one condition, you need to make effort on all the people of the locality. So when the case comes to me and what my decision is, they follow it. So the elders agreed, they went back to the town, they made effort, everybody agreed that now this is a serious situation, it's not healthy. So they made the Hazrat the Faisal. So at that time there, the British courts, the cases started dropping, so the judge needed to put an inquiry, what's happening, we see that uh, now there's not so many cases coming, the police stations are empty, etc. So they got information that Mona Tanwi was handling all the matters. So the officer that went to Hazrat Tanwi, the question is, he was asking him some a question, eh? So one of his questions was, Log up who jante? Do the people know you? So Mantanu's reply was, Jante nahi mante. They don't only know me, they obey me. So we know Allah, we know the Nabi of Allah, we know about Akhirat, we know about Jannat, we know about Jahannam. But are we really practicing and applying that in our lives? Sahaba came to Nabi of Allah and said, Ya Rasulullah, akhbirna ma kana fi suhufi Musa. What do I in the scriptures of Musa so we can get an idea? So he gave an example, he said, kana fiya satsitatu kalimat, it was six statements. Ajibtu liman ayqana bin nar kayfa yadhak. I am astonished and, and amazed that a person knows he has yaqeen about Jahannam Yet he has time to laugh, to joke, to enjoy in amuse, amusement and things which are useless, not beneficial at all. وَأَجِبْتُ لِمَنْ أَيْقَنَ بِالْمَوْتِ I am amazed at a person who has yaqeen about death. It is sure we're going to die. كَيْفَ يَفْرَحْ 
Yet he has time to be elated and happy. I am amazed. Liman ayqan bil hisab. Somebody knows judgment day, qiyamah, hisab, kitab, reckoning is going to take place. كيف يعمل السيئات؟ How is it possible that he's committing guna? لمن أي لمن أي قن بالقدر؟ I'm amazed a person knows that there's a thing called تقدير and destiny. كيف يحزن؟ Yet he still has grief. This was the decree of my Allah. I am happy with the decision of my Allah. I am amazed لمن يرى الدنيا وتقلبها بأهلها. That people know about dunya, its uncertainty, its volatility. كيف يثم إنه إليها yet they take solace, they find pleasure, they dedicate all their time, all their energies in dunya. I'm amazed لمن أيقن بالجنة that people have يقين they know that there is a thing called جنة وهو لا يعمل الحسنات but he does not do any actions to justify, to prove. To show to Allah that He wants a Jannah. So He knows all these things we know about it, but we're not proving, we're not backing it up by our mal. To understand this, uh, somebody has four sons. One son totally disobeys the parents, he does not listen at all, he does contrary, actually, he does worse. He has bad habits, he, he's got drug habits etc. He is putting that family in complete distress, worry and concern. The second son, 50-50, sometimes he listens, sometimes he doesn't listen, but he's not so involved in bad and evil. The third son is a son who listens to the parents all the time. Whatever they ask him to do, he does it. And there's a fourth son. He does everything the parents want. He listens to them, he complies. And he goes the extra mile. He makes sure my parents are happy. Never ever should I ever see one day a grum on the face of my parents. He makes their khidmat. He gives extra time. The first son, parents wish he was dead. I wish he wasn't on this earth. The last son, from their hearts, they make dua for him. They, 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 they make dua all the children were like him. Likewise, the first son for his own Islam, if he has to get arrested, they're happy. And they say, hopefully he'll take lesson. They need to put him in a rehab. Whatever steps they need to make to make sure he changes, that steps are implemented. There are some servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah sends halat so that they can change. That's the first son. The second son, who he listens sometimes, doesn't listen sometimes, they give a job where he will learn and take lessons. They'll give him work for his own Islam. They'll make him wash the cars. They'll make him clean the house. They'll give him work so that slowly, slowly he will come closer and he will not disobey his parents. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put them into difficulties so that they take lessons they realize. The third son who listens all the time but doesn't go the extra mile, they will put him in a business, but not in a senior position. Why? Because they don't trust him 100%. They don't believe in him 100%. And the last son who does extra more than above, they will give him the keys to the business. They will make him in charge of the business. If the parents were told that now if you had to give your estate, what would you do? If they had an option even after you die and there was no shari inheritance, the first son they'll take him out of the well. The second son they'll leave him just enough so he can survive. The fourth son they'll set him up so he's set. But the, the, the third son, in the fourth son they'll give him the keys to all the business, they'll give him the banking codes, they'll give him access to everything, they'll give him the keys to the safe. Likewise, those bandas and servants of Allah, and we can see like Sahaba, they needed honor. Walillahi al-Izzatu, wali Rasuli, wali al-Mu'minin. Allah gave them honor on the earth. Wala tahinu, wala tahzanu, wa antumul a'launa. If you need supremacy, Allah will give them supremacy on the earth. If they want the vice gerents on the earth, la yastakhlifannahum fil ard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them vice gerents. If they need to be loved by even the people of Batil and Kufr, Sayyaj Allah Rahman Wudda, 
Allah will put love in the hearts of the people. Allah Subhanahu will give them hayat and tayyiba, a splendid life. Allah's help and assistance will be with them. If they need safety, Allah will protect them. Lahumul amn. If they need the blessings from the heavens, barakat min as sama. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will give them all the blessings that can be given to anybody. Allah will give them the treasures. So we need to check now which son am I, and we need to turn to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The doors of Allah's mercy does never end; it doesn't stop. The story of Wahshi who assassinated the uncle of Nabi alayhi salatu was salam and his body was mutilated. He wrote a letter to Nabi alayhi salam while he was in Mecca. Uridu an I want to accept Islam. Uridu an Aslam. I want to become a Muslim. But he said, Yamna'uni. Some things are forbidden, forbidden me and stopping me from Islam in the Quran. So Nazalat Alayka wa hiya qawluhu these ayat wal ladhina la yad'una ma Allahi ilahin akhar The people ascribe partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala They kill people wa la yaznoon and they commit zina wa may yaf'al thalika yalqa athama whoever does this So uh, Wahshi said I've done all these three Is there any options? So these ayat were revealed, ayat were revealed, illa man taba, those who make tawbah, wa amana, bring iman, wa amila amal and salia and they do good actions. Fa ulaika yubadillahu sayyatim hassanat. Allah will change the bad into good. So Wahshi wrote again, that there is sharait and conditions here, that he has to do good amal. I don't know if I'm going to live long to do good actions. So again, ayat were revealed, inna Allah yaghfiru. إن الله لا يغفر أي يشرك به الله سبحانه وتعالى does not forgive شرك ويغفر ما دون ذلك لما يشاء but whom Allah سبحانه وتعالى wants to forgive Allah will forgive فكتب إلى الوحشي so وحشي wrote a reply he said there's another condition I don't know أي يغفر لي أم لا I don't know if I'm going to be forgiven so again آيات will reveal قل يا إبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم أو those servants who have excess exacerbated the avenues of guna don't lose hope لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا الله سبحانه وتعالى forgives all sins إنه هو الغفور الرحيم هلا is the most forgiving so وحشي had no conditions he said I'm ready to accept Islam and he came to Medina Munawwara. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us to think of making that sincere tawbah and from being amongst those sons who are the ones whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Yesterday we did the fadail of third kalima morning and evening to read a hundred times Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illa Allah wa Allahu akbar wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Whoever says a hundred times Another narration, 100 times morning and evening, he will get the reward of freeing a hundred slaves from the progeny of Ismail alayhi salam. Whoever says a hundred times morning and evening, he will get the reward of spending and sending a hundred horses fully laden with equipment in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar a hundred times, like sacrificing a hundred camels in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illallah a hundred times the reward will be between the earth and the sky and nobody will come on a day of Qiyamah with more reward than this person here. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah that will wipe out all his sins. And keeping the night alive, let us see how we can keep the night alive as it's one bin Sulaim never put his body on the floor. And he was like that for 30 years. When the time came and he was in the throat of death, his sons were there and he said, Ya Abati, oh my father, can you now lie on the ground? When death came, he said, No, 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 no. I cannot because I will not fulfill the act and the agreement which I made with Allah. I will never put my body on the floor. He died sitting.